नमस्कार वेरी वॉम वेलकम टू ऑल दी व्यूअर एंड लर्नर इन दिस सेशन ऑफ सी आई टी एंड सी आर टी आई एम रेणु भट्ट विद यू ऑल यू आर वॉचिंग अस लाइव ऑन ई विद्या चैनल नंबर टेन एंड इन दिस पर्टिकुलर सेशन वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न मोर अबाउट हिस्ट्री ऑफ प्रिंटिंग एंड दिस सेशन इज फॉर टेंथ स्टैंडर्ड सोशल साइंस स्टूडेंट एंड वॉट अबाउट द ओरिजिन ऑफ प्रिंटिंग कहाँ पर से वो आया किस तरह से वो इवॉल्व हुआ कहाँ कहाँ पर प्रिंटिंग पहले इवॉल्व हुई आपको बारे ये सभी के चीज़ों के बारे में बताएंगे हमारे एक्सपर्ट जो हमारे साथ स्टूडियो में मौजूद हैं सो विदाउट एनी फर्दर डी लेट्स क्विकली मीट हर यू आर डॉक्टर मृणमय रे वेरी वॉम वेलकम आम नमस्कार and ma'am is assistant professor in history from department of education in social sciences ncert and dear learners and viewers in case you have any query regarding this particular topic our topic is history in printing you can reach out to us through our various medium aap hame call kar sakte hain our telephone number pe jo hai 8800440559 either you can drop a mail as well hamara email address hai dts.class10@cit.nic.in so we are expecting your participation in this particular the session because this session is only for you so uh, let's quickly start this session and ma'am uh, first uh, the at the very beginning of this session i would like to ask you about the context and content of this particular topic ma'am okay good afternoon children today we will be, we will be talking about uh, chapter 5 from your history textbook and the uh, name of the title of the chapter is print culture and the modern world which is there in your chapter 5 of your history textbook so here in this um, session we will be discussing the history of printing and we will mainly divided it into three or four parts rather first will be the introduction of history of printing then from there we will move to how history went to europe and how it came <coughs> to india and what was there before printing in india that is how we mainly intend to devise this session hmm and that was quite quite interesting point ma'am ki what was the previous uh, we can say technology before printing right so ma'am what do we understand by printing okay so when we talk about printing children you will all realize that printing if you look around you everything that you see is printing whether it is your ncert textbook or the film posters that you see the newspapers the calendars the advertisements that you see everything that you see is printed now what is printed printing printing is making or copying impression of materials like paper and cloth against an inked printing surface that is what we basically understand by printing okay So, ma'am, could you please throw some light on the initial stage of printing in the world, <coughs> ma'am? Okay. So, when we talk about the history of printing, printing first came to China, and from China it went on to Japan and Korea. Now, in China, it came in five hundred ninety-four, and there it was printed on by rubbing paper against the wooden blocks. the first or the earliest books that were printed in chinese were called the accordion books which had a very beautiful calligraphy as you can see on your screen the image on the left is the accordion book and the image on the right is that of the calligraphy now calligraphy is the art of beautiful and stylized writing now interesting fact about the accordion book is that the accord the paper used in the accordion books were very thin so often the printing could not be done on both the sides of the paper so often it was printed on one side and then as you can see on the image it was folded okay. so now so ma'am as you told us that it's uh, found in uh, china japan in korea hmm? so how did printing technology evolve in china and japan ma'am okay so hmm so as we have seen that printing came to china in uh, very early but gradually what happened if you know the chinese history that there were emperors and these emperors had a very elaborate bureaucratic system 
So by the time we come to 16th century China, we often see that these bureaucrats were chosen into the system through a process of very rigorous examination. And to prepare for the examination, the emperors would sponsor the printing of these reading material for the candidates. <coughs> as and when the number of candidates kept increasing, so gradually even the demand for the printing material or the printed textbook went up. Now by the time we come to the 17th century, urban culture had greatly bloomed and diversified in many spaces. So was the use of printed material. Till now we have studied that the books were used mainly by the candidates, but by the 17th century merchants started using this printed material for keeping a record of trade information. Other than that printing or the printed books had become a part of leisure activity also. Another very interesting change that we observe in the 17th century in China is that rich women or the wives of the bureaucrats started to write beautiful poems and about their lives in the printed material. By the time we come to 19th century in China, we see that the western printing technology or printing machines had already arrived. As you can see on your screen, you can see the printing block on your left and the final printed paper on the right. Now with the coming of mechanical press that was imported from Europe, a lot of <coughs> needs of the western style schools was or could be catered by these printing factories. In fact, Shanghai, a very important center in China became the hub of new print technology. Now by the time after finishing, we go to Printing now has shifted from China now and it has gone to Japan. Now when we talk about Japan, printing came to Japan from China and around 768 and 770 CE we see that printing has already come from <coughs> China to Japan and what had come? This was brought by the Buddhist missionaries when they came to Japan, they brought the printing technology with them. As I have already mentioned, printing was done on rubber blocks or uh, wooden blocks. The same method of hand printing was used even in Japan. The earliest reference or evidence that we find of Japanese book is the Buddhist uh, Diamond Sutra. Now this book was printed in 868 and it has basically six sheet. As you can see on your screen, it is a, uh, one of the pages of the Diamond Sutra. However, later by the time we come to medieval period of Japan, we see that printing started to be used on the textiles, playing cards and even paper money was printed. Okay, okay. So and that was the information regarding China and Japan, right? And here we are very curious to know about the Europe, ma'am. So could you please uh, tell us something about the history of printing in Europe, ma'am? Okay, sure. So when we talk about uh, history of printing in Europe, in Europe also printing technology, technology came from China through the Silk Route in the 11th century. You all must have heard about Marco Polo. He was an explorer and he came to China and when he returned in 1295, he brought with him the woodblock technique which gradually became very popular and spread across Europe. Now we uh, advantage of this was that now printed copies became cheaper and very easily available to merchants, to students. In fact, printing became or books became so popular that even book fairs were held during this period. 
wood blocks which was the technique that was used in China was the same technique that was used even in Europe <clears throat> and it was used in playing cards in religious pictures. However, another interesting surface on which printing was done was velum. As you can see on the picture on the right of your screen, velum is a, a paper or a material that is prepared from animal skin for the purpose of printing or writing. Now, on velum, whatever was printed or writer, write, written, it was often used by the aristocratic circles in Europe. Hmm. So, that was the history of printing in Europe. Now, ma'am, as we can see on the screen as well about jo uh, Gutenberg, right? Yes. So, what was the importance of Gutenberg printing machine, ma'am? Okay. Now, uh, once we have heard that printing uh, technique was brought by Marco Polo, hmm. the next big thing that changed or revolutionized printing in Europe was the invention of the printing machine and it can be credited to none other than a German gentleman called Johann Gutenberg. Now, the advantage of a printing machine is that it makes printing much faster and quicker and cheaper. So, the idea for developing a printing machine came to Gutenberg from none other than oil pressing machines. Interestingly, like previously wood plates were used for printing, for the first time we use see that the use of metal plates are being used with alphabet molds for printing. Now, when this uh, printing press was invented, the first three years it came out by taking about 180 copies of Bible were printed on the Gutenberg press. Now, with this mechanical or machine made printing became popular, printing gradually spread across Europe and the production of books went up enormously. By the time we come to the 15th century, only 20 million copies were or books were printed, but by the time we come to 16th century, we see that a jump of a huge jump occurs and about 200 million books were printed by the 16th century. Hmm. Here children you can see a copy of the Gutenberg Bible at New York Public Library and you can see how beautifully the handwriting or the print is there because you are we are using a mechanical printing machine and it has metal blocks. So, these are two of the interesting additions to the Gutenberg printing machine and it is on display in your screen. Hmm. So, ma'am what was the uh, important feature of Gutenberg Bible ma'am? Children, one of the most interesting aspects of Gutenberg Bible was that as I have already said that only 180 copies of Gutenberg Bible was printed. Now, what is interesting is that even though you can see it on your screen that even though the calligraphy or the text or the content was printed with the help of metal plates, but the drawings or what we often call illustrations and drawings of flowers, foliage, all that was done by painters individually on each sheet of paper. So, what makes the Bible so interesting is that each copy of the 180 Bibles that were printed, each copy was different, not just each copy was different. In fact, each paper of each of the 180 Bibles was different. In fact, lot of times each purchaser could customize or ask for special demands of what they actually wanted in terms of drawing on the corners of the Bibles. This is what makes the Bible printed at Gutenberg Press so interesting and illuminating for you all. Okay. 
So that was the important features of Gutenberg Bible. And ma'am, now we are excited to know about India, right? So what sure. was the pre-printing era of, uh, in India, ma'am? Okay. So uh, now that children, we have discussed hmm. what was happening in Europe, we, what was happening in China, Japan. Now we come to India. Now when we think of India, of course, something must have existed even before printing came right. to India. So what was it? There were other types of techniques or ways in which writing was done during the pre-printing era in India. What was it? During the pre-printing era, we find some, you must have heard of the word called manuscripts. Hmm. So manuscripts were written before printing came to India. Now often these manuscripts were either on the, were either on palm leaf you must have seen a palm leaf, they would, they would dry it, they would season it, they would boil it, they would again keep it for drying and eventually when the palm leaf was completely ready for writing, they would use a stencil sort of a thing and then write it on the palm leaf. Often to keep the palm leaf intact, they would uh, make holes on the sides of the palm leaf and bind it and press it between two pieces of wooden covers. Sometimes when they were writing on paper, if you see the image on the right below, you will see that there are drawings also. So often the as the writing techniques increased or got better, even drawings, handmade drawings were done to make the manuscripts very interesting. Now often what happened is that the manuscripts were very difficult to read. Why? Because the handwriting would keep varying. And one interesting thing I would like to tell you all that how now in today's day we can always reproduce by making a photocopy or Xerox. What was happening when there was nothing like that? What would happen is once the manuscript was almost, because the manuscripts were very fragile and could not be used for very long, once the manuscript was in its decaying state, often the content of the manuscript would be transferred to another new manuscript and it would be taken care or carried forward. Now what as a result of this often the previous manuscript, the, if the handwriting was difficult to understand, it would happen that the words might change. So eventually a manuscript which has been rewritten multiple times, a lot of times interestingly the meanings of the words also would change because it was difficult for them to read the manuscripts. So manuscripts, okay. Yeah. Uh, now when we come to uh, another very interesting uh, image if you see that, he, I have already explained that manuscripts were very expensive and fragile. However, when they were written on paper, of course, as and when people had more money, they involved in making manuscripts more and more beautiful. So this manuscript is by uh, Faraz, it is called the Divan. And the interesting part is that he was a 14th century uh, poet who would collect these poems and combine, and combine it and make it into a book form. Now in this manuscript you can see how beautifully other than the calligraphy or the stylized writing, there are drawings also which depict a lot about how the king and the queen are sitting, how the attendants are taking care of them and the backdrop, all this is being hand drawn, you have to keep that in mind. So another very interesting thing is even after calligraphy was done and printing press had already come to India manuscripts kept to be used for a very very long time. You can say in fact till the 19th century manuscript was in use for the people who could afford because it was expensive to employ a artist to specially draw paintings or to beautifully write or decorate the manuscript you had to spend money. So often even printed material were cheaper but manuscripts were always very expensive and only the rich and the aristocrat could afford to use these manuscripts. 
So it was not for the general public? No, it was not for the general public. Okay. So pre-printing era in India was handwritten manuscripts, right? Yes. So it was very fragile and very expensive. And ma'am, what about the printing era in uh, India, ma'am? How did uh, printing came to India? Okay. Hmm. Now children, we have already discussed in detail how or what was there before our printing era. Now we come to the period where we talk about how and what happened during printing. Now printing came to India during the 16th century and it was brought by the Portuguese missionaries uh, to Goa. Now what is interesting? is when we discuss later ahead as you can see it on the screen uh, what we see is that the most of the texts or the language that was uh, printed was basically of the local regional languages here we see that the first books or the earliest books were either in tamil or in malayalam or in uh, uh, Kanara or in Konkani. Konkani is the language of Goa. Now, when we talk about uh, these languages, you can see that this is one of the earliest printing machines that was brought to Goa by the Portuguese. Here, you can see by 1764, almost 50 books were printed in Konkani and Kanara. Now, the first Tamil book that was printed, that was printed in Cochin in Kerala and it was printed in 1579. Now, by the time we come to 1710, Dutch Protestant monast missionaries had printed 32 more Tamil texts. Now, these texts were basically ancient scriptures which the Protestant missionaries decided to print. And in 1713, we find that the first Malayalam book was printed. Please keep in mind, children, that now Till now, all the books are in regional language, whatever we have discussed in now, mm. not a single text is in English. All these are from the south, southern states, either it is Kanara or it is Konkani or it is Tamil or Malayalam. So, this, is, this was the initial stage of printing when it came to India. Now, we, from regional language, we come to what happens to when did English language press came in India. Hmm. Now, English press came to India around, seven, of course, English printing came to India around 1780 and one of the first uh, newspapers that came out was called the Bengal Gazette. It was bro brought out or edited by J. H. Hickey. Now, the interesting story behind, behind this magazine is that uh, Hickey was of the opinion that it is a very neutral newspaper, but somehow a lot of content sometimes would displease the British Britishers or British administrators and a point came when this Bengal gazetted or J. H. Hickey was removed and this newspaper was shut down. However, by the 18th century or we can say the late 18th century, we see that even Indians began to publish newspapers in English. So, that is a very interesting transition from Britishers controlling English printing to now Indians taking charge of printing in India. Interestingly, one of the earliest Indian newspapers which came out once a week was also uh, brought out by uh, the name, same name, the Bengal Gazette and it was brought out by Gangadhar Bhattacharya and by the close of 18th century, we see that this was the uh, first Indian printed newspaper. So, basically we have now traced the entire history of printing and how printing came to India. Okay. So, those were the information about printing era in China, Japan, Europe and India ma'am. That yes. was quite interesting. We still have two to three minutes more left in this session. What other interesting facts or some key points you want to share with all our learners ma'am? Okay. Uh, 
another interesting if you go to your book you will find that there are very interesting stories about how women played a very important role in the printing now printing as a, it was revolutionary because it gave the medium for people to express themselves their inner feelings their thoughts their opinions without being recognized a lot mm. of times people would write their pseudonyms or they would write as anonymous and right. bring out their opinions it could be because it is a period by the time we come to 18th or 19th century for that matter here is the time when india is struggling for independence here this time when people want to express and bring their thoughts or opinions across entire indian subcontinent it is here that printing brings about a revolutionary change that is as it is easy for them to take it to the rest of the people or the common people who because printing is much more cheaper because the machines are mechanical printing press mm. it was easier for people to have access to what was happening or how were the leaders thinking about indian independence what were the strategies what were the britishers doing all that gave new direction to the people and it was also very interesting medium of protest not right. just information but also protest whatever people thought they wanted to contest or write that could be expressed through printing or the newspapers hmm. even though we now know that newspapers or in today's print world we get everything newspapers come to us every day but we are talking about a about 100 years 150 years back when printing was even though it was mechanical printing press but it was difficult so hmm. usually the newspapers right. would be coming only once a week hmm. so printing was always the best uh, way of expression right yes. and it will be and it's time for me to wrap up this session because uh, it's uh, we are running very short of time right now ma'am so mrin ma ma'am thank you so very much for being with us okay. thank you ma'am for your very wonderful informations ma'am thank you thank you so it was quite interesting uh, session about history of printing by for social science students and uh, before i wrap up this session let me share some very important piece of information regarding ncert's textbooks ncert textbooks for the academic year 2023 24 are available throughout the country and these textbooks may be purchased directly uh, from ncert sales counters located at new delhi ahmedabad bangalore kolkata and guwahati these sales counters will be functional on all the weekdays including all the gadgeted holidays saturdays and sundays as well from 9:30 am to 6 pm and if you want uh, to buy all those books uh, online you have to go to the uh, website of us that is ncertbooks.ncert.gov.in and all these books will will be delivered at your doorstep with no delivery fees and in case you want the soft copy of all those books in pdf version it can also be downloaded online for free from ncert diksha e pathshala website and from our mobile app as well we would request you to visit our website that is ncert.nic.in to know more about the authorized vendors with that note me renu bhat is taking your leave but you stay tuned to e vidya channels our next session is for maths then standard students and the topic would be applications of trigonometry part 1 namaskar